there's a lot of problems um, in the world, and as I attempt to solve them, the pain has taken its toll. So I've been drinking and smoking recently, and I'm not thrilled about telling people that. But like I said, I'm gonna tell the truth, and no matter how um, bad it makes me look. So, when you look at society and the definition of fanaticism, right, what's the difference between a fanatic and somebody who truly lives by principle? How many of you think you know the answer? It goes back to the negative connotation, right? If they do it in a respectable way, such as jumping on a grenade that is in the benefit of the best interest of society and in... Um, line with the philosophy of the governing class and society at large, then it is considered okay. However, if it is something that the ruling class and the social controllers don't want to have spread, you know, and become commonplace, then you know, it, it's a bad thing, right? A lot of people miss this. They say, well, what scale should we use? <clears throat> Most people don't even get to that point. The fact of the matter is, they want everybody to be this kind of survival. So, a Christian who dies of starvation rather than stealing is actually a fanatic as well, according to... Um, the corporate elite and everyone who sees it their way or pretends to see it their way. Their official response, on record response, so to speak, is, yes, that person is foolish. You know, you have to think about yourself in this world and your, you know, take care of your kids and stuff like that. But they're going to move on to the government is going to take care of your kids. So think about yourself. You know, always think about yourself and we're going to remove anything, whether it's religion or, you know, break down the family, strong family bond, you know, the bond between family members. They're going to destroy everything that gives you a reason to say, you know what, I can't do that because I have this responsibility or it's against my faith. You know, so you're 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 now a survivalist and it's a level of selfishness. So also. When you look at this thing, they're going to continue this philosophy of, uh, you know, people who are poor are like frogs. A white person who's a frog can potentially become a prince with the right um, help and grooming. This is the this is what they believe, you know, and this is what they're impressing upon people subtly. But a black person, even if they, you know, you, you put a lot of energy and time and love into them and try to build something with them. They'll never be that, you know, they're a no good thief. They're ignorant. They're players. You know, they've been, you know, in the past, they've been given positions based on their skin color, not their, um, you know, skills, not their, their, their merit. You know, this is the type of thing. So it goes both ways where it's saying, oh, these black guys commonly get these jobs because, oh, they need to meet their quotas or, or, or so companies can say that they're not racist. And, you know, then there's white guy, there's black guys and all these white guys get their job. You know, it does go both ways, but the traumatic, uh, the, the, the worst effect is, you know, the white guys, you know, uh, get that, that white privilege. However, it is not, you know, um, it, it's sub, a super dramatic thing, you know, just because someone's white doesn't mean life is easy for them. I think we all understand that, you know. Uh, it doesn't mean that, you know, they don't have a lot of similar problems that, uh, you know, other minorities have. But I think I said it well when I said, you know, a black person who is a frog has no potential for being a prince. He can only be a glorified frog. You can put on a crown and a cape. He's going to be a frog with a crown and a cape. But that white person, he can get prettied up. When he gets money, you know, he can get pretty and he can go places where a black person, no matter how rich he is or how popular he is, can never go. A black person can never truly sit at the table, so to speak. 
They will always sit at a table that answers to the table if they choose to go along to get along, which I personally wouldn't want to do, even if I thought the system was fair because it's against my sacred morality and my belief system. But I'll leave it there. Focus and pay close attention. The CIA doesn't just start drug fads such as LSD with their behavior um, modification programs, their different CIA funded, um, you know, chemicals and psychiatric and uh, psychological operation programs. They also, and listen carefully now, torture people in clandestine groups, not just terrorists and not just political groups. Over the years, intelligence agencies have tortured these people, you know. So when one secret society became dominant, you know, at one point, um, these, these kind of Enlightenment era society, Illuminati, they then used the governments to pressure every secret society and any group they thought had something precious. Now remember, knowledge is power. Knowledge is more power than gold and, 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 and what have you in most cases, right? If you truly think about it. So when they're going for the resources, do you think they're going to stop at diamonds and gold? No, they're going to African secret societies, you know, Middle Eastern secret societies. They got all these motherfuckers on board for years. You know, look, look into this stuff. The Masons and all these people, these people are working with the government, you know, and they, they start secret societies and they get the ones that they didn't start on board and they've had them on board and they've all been working together. Yeah. Now, it needs to be explained like that. It has to. Because how many of you can make a valid argument to the contrary? Make an argument. What, you think they don't care about knowledge? Then why do we bring all the Nazi scientists here, dickhead? Stupid motherfucker. Or you think, you think the government doesn't think religion and science are important? Oh, wow, they, they, they ignore the power of the Pope. Any other arguments? Well, oh, walrus. Kangaroo Jack. Anybody. Naysaying Nancy. Anybody. All right, then. Fear is for those people who aren't great warriors. The great warrior is dead already, since life, time, and death are man-made concepts. All spiritual knowledge can only be known by God in its truest form and everything else is just an oversimplification. So while the great warrior is neither alive or dead, one can also say the great warrior is dead. So therefore everything he's doing is a task which is consistent with his sacred morality, his adherence to said concept, and fighting for honor. 